Okay, guys, welcome back to um, our monthly live. It is just Chelsea, Jean, and Loz here today. Uh, we go live every month on the first Wednesday of every month with stuff that's going to help empower you to make better decisions about your health and well-being. And coming from two different very part, it's two very damn it, <laughs> very different parts of the uh, the health landscape. Um, what we want to offer you is unique perspective so that you can start to make more informed decisions and ask better questions when it comes to giving yourself the tools to look after yourself. So I am, I've rebranded what I am called. Oh. I'm a mo motiv I'm a motivation and mojo mentor and I specialize in healthy habits and uh, specifically help high achievers and high performers eat breathe sleep move and hydrate more effectively so they can have more focus performance and confidence and um, i am joined by the delicious chelsea mind you we are both a little bit sick at the moment mm. yeah it's not fun is it no. you know getting rid of all of the winter um you know out of our body coming into summer <laughs> that's the way that Bring i'm gonna annoying laws yeah and, so, and, and and Chelsea and I look after ourselves very well, but, you know, we are also mortals and yes. sometimes catch all of the things. Um, but Chelsea specialises in lymphatic health, don't you? Which is so important and nobody really does anything about it until they hear you speak and then they start rubbing their boobs and then they love it. Well, it's, I think education is a big part, Loz, because we aren't educated on the things that we can do for ourselves a lot now and empowering people to look after themselves with the things that you do and then the education with the lymphatic system and how to best detoxify the crap out and how to choose what goes in uh, is something that I love teaching teaching and helping others build their new future moving forward no matter where their health um, has brought them to now there is always something that they can do so offer that um, incentive, offer advice, offer some hope that yes, you can take some health health into your own hands and and make a change no matter where you are at, your age, your mobility level, your education, any of that, you can absolutely make a change. And so we've come up with a topic this week of how to prioritize you this Christmas, because we know that we can get lost. We can get lost in all of the kids stuff we can get lost in all of the business stuff you know I'm hanging out for a holiday as well we can lose ourselves in relationships as well we can lose our identity so many women so a lot of um you know our clients are that women from the age of 35 to you know 65 and you can really just lose yourself and that whole who am I question comes up and you know, it's, 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 it can be really hard, especially around the time of Christmas with everybody coming together and the yes. pressure of, um, you know, whose house are you going to, who's cooking what, who brings what presents, just all of the added, the added pressure. And, you know, maybe we can just talk about today about things that you can do so you can not lose you because if you're not shining bright, then how can you be offer the best to others and how can you be the best example um, to others as well? And we all can't shine bright all of the time. And we know that both of us now are a little bit under the weather. And but, you know, we we do our best with what what we've got of what we can do. And that's all. And that's what we want to offer you guys, guys today. It's about really simple strategies that aren't going to cost you anything to do that aren't going to take up a hell of a lot of time, that will in fact make you feel so much better that when challenges arise, as they do during these times of the year, shit goes wrong sometimes. Mm. You know, I know that like every day, every every year when Christmas happens, my mum over caters something chronic. And then it's, it's you know, you, she, she tells you to bring something and then she's already made it. And it's a little bit stressful because you're like, damn it, I didn't need to bring it. But it wouldn't it be nice to be able to face those more challenging situations coming from a place where you've already sort of looked after number one? Mm. So mm. what's the first tip you've got okay. there, Chelsea? Number, we'll, number we'll one, so it. we've got, yeah, five tips. Number one, prioritise self-care rituals. 
And how important is this? And I think so many of us have, and I don't know about you, but like when I'm talking to clients, people, when I talk about self-care, it looks more like curling up to a good movie with a glass of wine. That Now, that is a form of self-care or self-soothing, whatever you want to call that. But mm. self-care looks different for everyone, right? Mm. Yeah. What's your self-care look like? Yeah, so mine is I'm getting back to exercising. I am getting back to some meditation. So really connecting so with my with my why, with my who, with my what do I really want out of out of life? Just because you've been going in one direction for for so long, it doesn't mean that you can't pivot. It doesn't mean yep. that remember what you used to love doing you know, find that again or find something new. Where can you like just find some more joy and connect to that? So I think. Yes, I love that. Meditation and writing things down um, and reconnecting again. So I think that has to be a little bit self-care. And meditation isn't always about sitting in a lotus position atop a mountain on a perfect summer's day as an eagle soars overhead and you reach Nirvana, guys. Like, Meditation is about going deep and um, people talk about emptying their mind and, and I, I, I disagree with meditation. It's actually about just focusing on one thing. And for some people, you know, when I teach meditation as, as, a, as a facilitator, um, people get really lost in this idea that it's all about just switching off their brain. But I think a really good way to start meditating is to A, close your eyes. And the reason closing your eyes is important in meditation and can be useful or at least softening your gaze is that 85 percent of the sensory input to your brain comes from your vision so by just closing your eyes down or at least softening them you are going to be able to start to tune into those other senses and so using your senses as a form of meditation is a really powerful but simple way Mm -hmm. for you to start switching your brain off and focusing on one thing so sometimes people like to focus on the, the sensation of their heartbeat I find a few clients do develop anxiety over that. So it's not always the first thing that I would suggest, but your breath, guys, Mm. just focusing on your breath. It doesn't have to be for long. Even if it's for one minute, two minutes, you'll probably find that once you've sort of settled into feeling what your breath is like, you'll want to stay for longer and it won't be as daunting. Mm. Um, But yeah, breath work. I don't know about you, but I love doing the breath work meditation types of stuff. Even Um, or focus. Even lost, just, yep. just or, or a focus. word. Yep. Just and that was, I was going to say focus on one thing. Yeah. Focus. And just just creating things. a mantra or it, it, and it's the one thing, right? Like it's, it's that simplification. So meditation, I think is a really great one for you to start with in, in terms of self care. Um, I'm the same. I've been meditating a little bit <coughs> more frequently now um, throughout the day. I normally start with a meditation uh, in the morning and I use like visualizations and things. I, I, I visualize colors and other types of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I've been meditating for quite a while now, but meditation is a really great form of just developing a sense of gratitude and mindfulness and even just doing exercises where you're just thinking about the things you're grateful for. That's a really simple tool as well. Uh, yeah. If you do struggle with the concept of like meditation, um, just thinking of like, three to five things every day that you grow for don't repeat them and don't make them the same every time but you know like being grateful for something as simple as I'm really grateful for being able to get outside today and feel the sun on my skin because you've got to think there are people right now in war-torn countries losing their family who are I mean I know that um in Gaza there's there's like 2.2 million people that have been displaced I mean it's intense so gratitude for just something that seems so similar can actually just bring you back into the present moment Mm. so I think I think that's a really great tip Chels yeah okay so number two um, mindful eating and hydration over Christmas we know how easy it is just to indulge um, a little bit and then a little bit and then I'll start tomorrow um, and a little bit and so just being mindful, I think, is a really good tool. So some some tips for that is if you are going to be drinking like excess alcohol or more alcohol, maybe make a rule that you have a glass of water in between. So things, yep. things like that. So just being mindful. It's like, yes, okay, I know that we're leading up to Christmas. So maybe I 
my and I've got some parties and some different things. So maybe I might do some five two, um, you know, uh, intermittent fasting. Maybe I might just have you know vegetables and soup or something else like in these in these couple of days because I know those other days that I am I don't want to I don't want to be the one at the party going can't have that can't have yes that, can't have that right <laughs> and bring it down it's, it's in. not a it's not a nice feeling mm. you know when you're the only person and you're a bit of a Debbie Downer right yeah so like, like plan so, like plan yeah. plan yeah. to succeed guys mm. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think the thing about mindful eating and people go on these weird tangents where they're like, they've got to be all 100% healthy all the time. And, you know, and and there's nothing wrong with thinking about health all the time. But the the idea of of healthy eating is is actually balanced. It's not about going without or feeling socially, socially isolated, especially at this time of year when it's about connection with other people right and and we find in western culture like we do connect a lot and then we eat a lot and we drink and and get merry and i feel like as long as you plan that into your your routine for this season Mm -hmm. it allows you then to navigate that with more ease because you're like okay well you know what like i might be not as physically active as as before maybe you're going to be more physically active because you're not tied to a desk um and it's, it's giving yourself the space to explore I guess that balance, but it's offsetting as well. So setting yourself some really clear rules, I think is an important part of, of, of eating slowly and mindfully as well. And being really conscious of connecting with your food. I always say there's a Buddhist principle and it's like, um, eat so slow that you drink your food and, um, it's like chew so slow that you drink your food and drink so slow that you eat your drink. Okay. And it's just like, Noticing the mouth feel of your food, noticing the connection with other people if you're in the presence of, of family or friends, um, but it also brings you back to that present state, right? And enjoy the enjoy the taste. Yes, the mouth the feel, flavor. the sensations, the flavors. Yes. I mean, we we are just, just so busy just like, like, like rah, 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 rah. right. I mean, Actually, I'm guilty of that. Down and digest. You know, yep. do take let it take that time. 100%. That's a, such a great tip. I'm going to, I'm going to drive. So if I'm yeah, not right. looking at the okay. camera, so, so the next one, I'm not looking uh, at the camera. Oh, that's because I'm concentrating. Okay. So the next one that we're talking about is staying active. So yeah, you get to change. If you're having holidays, you get to do something different. So whether that be like, I've wanted to do a Qi Gong or something class for a little while now. Um, I've wanted to do dancing lessons. I haven't done lots of any like yoga even this year. So getting back to movement um, and something different is I, I swam yesterday afternoon and I swam again this morning and like in the ocean or in a pool. Oh, I was I was down the Gold Coast um, overnight stay. I did a gig last night, so I was in a, at a hotel. Yeah, so I um, yeah, so I swam down at Versace um, in in the pool down there. It's nearly a hundred meters long. It's a bloody big pool. Um, but oh, on the weekend, I was I was out in the ocean. I was at Peel Island on the weekend, and mm. um, yeah, so just swimming out in the ocean was was beautiful. So staying staying active, chase the kids around. You know if the the kids are out playing with all of their new toys and different things like be part of that create yes. memories you know the when when kids look back at their christmas day it's going to be who played with them on yep 100 percent nephews and nieces and and everybody so just be active and just be part of um of the activities of of what's and going it's, on. the weather's beautiful and everyone bitches about how hot it is but you know like go outside in moderation like enjoy the warmth of the sun on your skin and the breeze in your hair like find those times and it doesn't have to be all day but find opportunities to be moving mindfully guys and connecting with other people once again connection is important you know being around the kids being around your family for a lot of us um I mean not me or you probably I mean especially not for me I've just had a, a, a week break but I don't tend to wind down a lot like work is fairly consistent for me over this period um but for a lot of people, they do have holidays. They do get to actually spend a little bit more time exploring the things that maybe throughout the year they haven't had a chance to do. So use it to your advantage, guys. Like if you love hiking, like get out, get up early, um, you know, do water stuff. Like you've just said, you've been swimming. I mean, what a great time of year to be getting in the water. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. So all of those things. So the the ladies that are joining us online, um, Lee and Belinda are both popping in and saying, you know, love this. Yes, we we need to do all of these. Not seeing yes. it as a diet, but just a normal way of life, making positive choices for our body and enjoy and enjoyment at the same time. So the next yes. one must be a little bit hard for both of us, mm -hmm. Loz. Um, the next Tell me more. is a digital detox. Oh, yeah, I love this. Well, I've just had one of those. I was on a cruise ship for a week in the middle of the ocean. I didn't have internet for the first few days. And then I ended up with food poisoning or whatever they want to call it. And then I ended up getting internet. Yes. But I did have a digital detox and it's great. And I spent a lot more time being off my devices than being on my device. Yeah. Um, and it's so refreshing just to have a break. But, you know, it is challenging. And I guess it's that, that balance and... um. You know, if you're running a business or, I mean, like we are, um, you know, there's a level of obligation to some degree to continue producing content, which normally requires a device. But mm. it's finding opportunities and deliberately creating opportunities, in fact, throughout the day, the weeks and months where you are not being engaged with those devices. And I think we've got such a reliance on devices for our stimulation, like, Yes. It's become quite dangerous and addictive. and Entertainment. We want to be entertained. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, you know, deliberately creating spaces where you aren't having to rely on that, it can be challenging, but it's also very enriching. Yeah. Um, so whether that's, you know, setting a specific time limit to your device use um, of an evening, like, so if you are one of those people that get caught in that scroll hole and you're constantly, you know, looking at that blue light device all the way up to your bedtime and then you're struggling to go to sleep, it could be something as simple as, you know what, um, I'm going to actually get off my device 15 minutes early. And it doesn't have to be an hour, two hours early. Like start small. I'm just going to, if you're normally off your device by 8 o'clock, get off at like 7.45 and then start to notice how much time that 15 minutes buys you and start to notice the emotions that you go through as you're detoxifying. Cause like any sort of detox, there is going to be some sort of backlash probably where you're going to feel the need and the itch and the desire and the impulse to reach for that device and, and see what other mechanisms you can put in place um, instead. And, and you might find in a very short period of time, they actually crave not being on the device at, at that evening because you've just filled that void with some other, thing that actually gives you joy like connecting with your partner or your kids or an animal or going for a walk does that make reading sense a, reading a book journaling so right all of yeah so even just having your phone outside the room at, at yes. night can be a yes. detachment um, and people are like oh but i use it for my alarm guys get a friggin extra alarm get a different alarm man like i have like an old school alarm clock next to my bed best yeah. thing i ever did not having my friggin phone in my room yes that's yeah. it. So yeah, right, like no I'm, excuses. I'm thinking of writing a book over this Christmas break, Loz. Oh, look at you! To get ready for my um, tour, the Wellness Way yeah. next year. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking of of doing that. So that takes you know time, reflection, sitting. Like I want to go and explore different like areas to go and do that in. So when you sit in a different space, so whether it be a a, a rainforest, a woody area at the beach. Oh, so, you know, whatever space it is, you will have different memories and different thoughts and things come up for you to reflect on and put all of that together, you know, in a book. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Good on you. Hold me to that, but that's where I will. I'm, I'm going through all of the different possibilities, and that's one one thing that's coming up um, for me. But that, then that won't be a digital detox week, or so I will be talking into a device. So yeah, but it, I guess it, it it's different to looking at a screen, right? So, yeah. and a digital detox isn't necessarily going without all of your devices all at once. It can just be as simple as picking a device, and and I think this is our human desire is like all or nothing. And I think this is where people normally fall over. And same with diet, exercise. I mean, this is what I teach as a coach, right? Yeah. It's about simplification, simplify to amplify. I say rather than going into eat, eat first everything and then feeling like a failure because you couldn't freaking succeed. It's like pick one thing, make it easy on yourself. Pick a device, pick a time, choose to turn off from it at that time. And then eventually the momentum that you gain from the change of the patterns will eventually catch up to other parts of your life where you'll choose to start um, reducing your consumption. 
if mm. that makes sense. And and even if you're still talking into a device, you're not there just typing frantically, right? Like you, you're changing the pattern. It's all about pattern changes. So I think that's a really great tip, the digital detox shells. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Last one, number five, yes. everybody, reflect and set intentions. Really good time at the end of the year. So just to reflect on your personal growth and on your achievements this year. So we don't celebrate ourselves enough. So just to have a look back at the year and reflect and, you know, have a bit of self-love and say, you know what, okay, well, I have achieved this. This is all the positives. Here are the negatives because there's always the two sides. And then set some intentions because we know thoughts, feelings, actions, results. Set some intentions of how you want to feel next year sitting here. Yeah, and I think it's great that you mentioned about celebrating and I think we are so caught up in a really fast-paced paradigm where it's all about productivity and a sense of being busy where people wear busyness as this badge of honor in their sleeve we, we're always about the next big thing the next big thing I call it I don't have to do lists I have success lists mm. so I have tasks and things that maybe I do need to do but it's just nothing is more satisfying than crossing it off and, and if I don't cross something off for a period of time I'm like, okay there's a reason that I'm not doing that why am I procrastinating can I delegate it can I automate it can I eliminate it is it in alignment with what I actually want to achieve um, but then using like graphical tools as well, I, I do vision boards um, before the end of every year. Yeah. And um, my vision board is literally on the wall at the end of my bed. So my husband and I, we do ours and I have achieved every single thing on that vision board. And by seeing it every day, when I wake up, it's the first thing I see when I go to bed, it's the last thing I see. It is in re-anchoring all of those goals and those ideas. And I think giving yourself good tools to be able to help you succeed is really important and celebrating success is one of those things this is why I love that you mentioned the book thing you said don't hold me accountable to it but sharing your goals even if they're the big hairy audacious goals that you you know you're scared of as soon as you articulate that to someone else it actually makes it a little bit more real and I think that when you do have a level of accountability you can totally write a book um it will take you a while though like it, it does take time to write yes. a book just so you know Yes, I'm, I'm a book two now, um, but it's, you know, like I think when you can share that. So, I mean, that's another thing is celebrating is great, but then celebrating with other people is even better and celebrate the small wins, like celebrate the fact that you get off your device 15 minutes early, celebrate the fact that you got to spend more time with your kids today, celebrate um, having those extra glasses of water and all of those things. And those juicy things we've spoken about guys, like, an unreflected moment is is a moment that's kind of being wasted. So at the end of every day, just sit there and reflect on all of the great things you did and, and use, I, I don't talk about failure. I talk about failing forward, but use it as feedback. Mm. Use it as feedback about, okay, well, maybe next time when that situation arises, I might do this different. Maybe you set these intentions of, you know, not having any alcohol yesterday and you freaking fucked that up. And that's okay. It's not a fuck up. It's, it's okay. Well, why? Like, what was the reason? What were the circumstances? What were the context? Don't beat yourself up about it and go, okay, well, it's not about having an excuse, but it's about, okay, well, next time I'll then plan for that to happen, but I'll have a mechanism in place. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. Being aware, really. Awareness. Being- yeah. Yeah. Yes. 100%. So you are the person watching you, right? Mm-hmm. You are the, the person, you get to watch what you do. You are this person here that watches what, what you do. So, you you know, be just be aware of, okay, you know, that happened. I get it. You yeah. know, I, I get yeah. it. Yeah, instead of it just being next, 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 boom, 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 you know, crazy. Um, so Lee has brought up some, some good pointers. Um, with the digital detox, turn off your notifications. Yes. Gosh, yeah, just I, 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 all of your notifications. Yep, I think that's the best idea. I don't have any notifications. So when people message me and they urgently want something, I'm like, I have no idea they've messaged me half the time. Mm. Um, but yeah, a lot of these apps will try and prompt you to turn notifications on, like because that's their role is to keep you attached to your phone. But yeah, set the boundaries, guys. Turn them all off. Turn your notifications off. Put your phone on do not disturb mode. Like most yes. modern phones now have options to be like, I'm fucking working. Put an auto, like I've gotten in the habit of now putting an auto responder on my emails. It's like, hi guys, I got it from the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Hi guys, in the, in the quest to be more productive, I only check my emails at these times on these days. If it is urgent, 
this is the way you can contact me, but um, please do not expect a, a, a return until these times on these days because that's how I hack my productivity. And I find just easy stuff like that where you're putting mechanisms in place to not be distracted means you can actually spend time doing the shit that you love and you're not just there like punching out emails and getting dopamine hits every time an email comes through like, oh, I got shit to do. And then you're like, fuck, I never did that thing today that I wanted to do. Mm. Great tip. Yeah. Great advice. Yeah. So we've got our staff Christmas party this Sunday. And so we're yeah. celebrating our clinic, you know, for the last 12 months and staff and everybody, you know, coming together to do that. So I'm really like looking forward to to that. And then we can all connect. Not all of us get to work at the same time. Um, so this is our in, you know, the everybody who yeah. works in Australia, not my awesome VAs who are uh, three VAs who are in the Philippines. And, um, you know, that that coming together, sharing and then planning, um, you know, the for, uh, for next year. Yep. We yeah. do the same thing. I've got my my team Christmas party this Friday with my mobility, my WOW mobility and rehab team. Um, people don't know that I do that, but um, I have a mobility equipment and rehabilitation store. I've had that for 17 years. It's a bricks and mortar store located in Ipswich, but we got a really great team. And like you, we don't always, always get to work together. So we do that same reason, celebrating. It's really casual, really informal. Um, have some food, have some drinks if people want it. And it's catching up, reflecting on the success, even though this year's been really tough. Yeah. Um, and then focusing on on what we can put in place for next year. And I think that's a really important opportunity to capitalize on, guys, is sharing that time with other people, no matter what it is that you do. If you work for yourself as long as you don't have a team, finding people that you can celebrate with. If you're an entrepreneur, finding other entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. Yeah. I've got an appointment. That, that's that's uh, what, five done. What a great chat. And guys, remember, if you are watching this on replay, please hashtag replay so that we know you've been watching. A lot of people lurk around and they never comment. But we'd love to know that you're loving this content. We are only going live once a month now. Oz is um, away. He's in Mexico visiting family. But next month, um, we will be back potentially with some, some juicy stuff. Not sure. Not well, sure, but keep an eye out on our socials and we'll yeah, let you know. Yeah, so we'll let you know, read the January date. It might be a little bit yep. early. We might just go straight yep. to February, but we'll see. Yep, absolutely. Okay. It's been a pleasure, Charles. Thanks Big so love. much, guys. If you've got any questions, okay. um, please chuck them in the chat or send us directly. You know where to find us. Loz Antonenko at Loz Life and Chelsea Jean at Chelsea Jean Lymphatics. Big love. Peace, Peace out. out. Bye. Bye.